Derry City have made a remarkable start to the new SSE or Tristy Premier Division season. They are a bastion of stability given the infrastructure that's been put in place and the finances available to their owner, Philip O'Doherty. But they have made on the pitch a magnificent start to the season. Six games so far and they're yet to be beaten and have already gotten wins under their belts against the likes of Shamrock Rovers and St. Patrick's Athletic. I'm delighted to say joining us on the line is their manager, Rory Higgins. Rory, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. No bother at all. Uh, the league is done and dusted already. Six games in, you've gotten wins over Pats, wins over Rovers, a draw against Dundalk. The top five have been vanquished. This is all hunky dory <laughs> for you, isn't it? Uh, absolutely not. Um, <laughs> no, there, there's no getting away with it. We've had a good, solid start. Um, but that's all it is. You look at football all across the world, the amount of teams that make good starts and then um, disappear. So. We're hoping that we can continue the form that we're on, but we're, we're, we're definitely not getting carried away, that's for sure. As you headed into the international break, I'd imagine that's the message that you left the players that you, you have at your disposal there over the last couple of weeks. That's what you've drummed into them, I suppose. Ah, of course. it's And, and the players know that um, it's only a start. Um, we've played a lot of good teams, that's true as well. But um, this, this league is very unforgiving if you show any snobbery or anything like that against anyone then you get turned over so um, we just have to focus on the next game that's put in front of us and, and try and deal with that You've got a squad like when you talk about knowing that the, the league is unforgiving and that there you know th- there's traps waiting around every corner pretty much no matter which way you turn um, we've seen in the past teams in their recruitments have you know, looked outside of the league and brought in a lot of players from abroad. I kind of think of Dundalk, I guess, in the last couple of years and what they tried to do there. Um, but yourselves, you look what you tried to recruit, while well, you have recruited, I guess, uh, across the last couple of years up in Derry. It's been noticeable that there are a lot of proven entities that have come to the club. You kind of look back at what you did in the off-season, bringing in uh, the McElhaney's, bringing in Matty Smith and what he'd done at St. Pa- at St. Pat's. Uh, Brian Marr had obviously done the business for Bray. And then, of course, uh, Michael Duffy and Cameron Dummigan and what they'd done at Dundalk. So, Knowing the road and knowing what's ahead in the League of Ireland is, is obviously a crucial thing because it's it's a unique beast in that respect. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, I suppose we brought in Jamie McGonagall halfway through last season who came from the Irish League, but the one you haven't mentioned, uh, Shane McElhenney from, was it Finn Harps in yeah. the last couple of seasons? Shane's been absolutely, um, and don't get, the, the marquee, Names the the Duffies and the Michael and uh, Patrick Michael and that they get they get all the the hype and rightly so because what they've done in their careers. But Shane Michael and over the last few weeks has been uh, absolutely outstanding for us as is Cameron Dummigan um, and players like that. So no, I think uh, the attacking players always get the the sort of the headlines and stuff. But um, I I think we, we've done well so far and and and. The likes of Shane and Dummigan and that and Brandon Kavanagh um, have been shining lights for us. And you've got a depth of squad there that pretty much people would be envious of at this stage too. No, well we don't really. Um, if you look at our if you look at our squad, whenever we're missing a few, we haven't had the luxury of having Michael Duffy and Matty Smith yet um, through injury. Kieran Harkins obviously uh, done his cruciate. So mm. if you look at the depth of our squad, if you look at it, we we've a lot of young players. Um, under 19 players on the bench um, so squad depth we don't have a, a huge amount but what we do have and it was important and in, in, in our recruitment is it would be signed players that have versatility um, and we were quite successful in that regard so that that's that's been very helpful with the injuries that we've had so so far uh, so far into the season yeah we mentioned Kieran Harkin's injury the, the one that grabbed a lot of headlines obviously like a week or so ago was Michael Duffy's he'd only just come back from a hamstring injury and then had lasted what 12 minutes against Strada and fractured his tibia how long do we reckon Michael is going to be out for um we're not going to put a we're not going to put a time on it it's unfair on him yeah. uh, but we we just want him to he's in good hands we have brilliant medical staff here Michael Higgerty leading it um Kevin McCready our S&C coach with a fantastic team um we will support him and give him everything that he needs in, a, in, a, in his road to recovery. But it's a huge loss, no getting away from it. But mm. we haven't had Michael so far this season, or we haven't had Matty Smith um, really at all. So we've navigated the first few uh, weeks well. So hopefully that continues. The main thing, I guess, for those long term injuries is keeping. 
the I guess the the emotional and, and the mental side of things up for the player involved because that would be the most difficult thing from their perspective is, is being unattached I guess for, for so long and away from the ins and outs and the day to day of, of training and playing and um, being a day to day footballer when you're outside of that when it's taken away from you for that length of time it can be a difficult thing mentally I know you would have dealt with injuries yourself as a player uh, it, it, it's a tricky one and, and I'm sure the, the structures that are in place around Michael to, to help him through this period too uh, of course, and, and what they do have is they've got brilliant teammates, they've got good staff here who'll look after them, and they live local, so they're not away from their families and, and children and stuff, so um, they've got good family, good families around them as well, which is important, so no, they'll be they'll be taken care of, and, and, and every day they come in, um, they'll be made feel part of the group, which is a huge part of the group, but you can feel detached from it, um, uh, so no, it's important that we 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 keep them uh, with us and, and involve them as much as we can. Talk to us a little bit about Will Patching because there's a player who, when he was signed, and, and Vinnie Perth has always spoken very highly of him and did when he was in and out of the club for that year at Dundalk. When he was signed initially, he pointed towards him saying, this is a guy who's come through the, the system of Man City and has the scope to be a, a very impressive player going forward through what happened there at Oriel Park it never really caught fire from but it did once he went on loan there last season to yourselves in the first half of last season what was it about the combination that confection of, of Derry and Will that managed to to spark his career I guess into life up there and, and tell us about the impact that he's made up there because he's been an absolute sensation for you yeah he's been he's been fantastic um, he didn't play um, in his first season at Dundalk uh, and then he wanted to get out on loan um, and Declan Devine brought him in on loan brilliant uh, signing from Declan brought him in um, and I can only I suppose talk about him from from my dealings with him um, yeah. absolutely exceptional footballer uh, really top level and, and um, I think with his ability uh, people talk about his creativity and, and, and all those sort of things that are that are of the top level, but he's he he moves well. He's a good athlete. He's quick. He picks up second balls. He does the the other parts of the game well. Um, but he de- definitely does have that uh, X factor at the top end of the pitch where he can hurt you. And, and we're delighted to have him. Um, and he loves it up here. He loves playing for the club. He loves living in the city. And um, the people the people in Derry have really taken to him. And it just seems to be a good fit at the minute and, and long may that continue. That's the thing about, about Derry as well. It's it's such a community-led club I mean, and, and it has forged particularly its own identity um, given the unique circumstances around the club, of course. And then, mm. you know, given the fact of, of where it is geographically, but it does require a buy-in from people who might necessarily be from the area to, to I guess, feed into what Derry City has been about in the league for the last nearly 40 years at this stage. That's right. And it's important that we have a lot of local players, but it's important that the, the, the players who aren't local are educated on, on on the city itself and on the club. So, no, you, he's bought in the, what ha, what's happening here. He's bought in the living here um, and the supporters love him. And, and he's really grasped that responsibility that he has within the team and it suits him. Um, he's a real laid back, languid sort of character, but... Um, He's a uh, he's a winner, and he and he's he's very brave. When when the game can be going against him, he still receives the ball, still wants to take the ball. So, uh, an extremely brave footballer. But why wouldn't you be with, with that talent? Exactly. Uh, I want to talk about your own path, I guess, towards this job, Rory, because, um, like your name had obviously been mentioned in dispatches when when the position became available, and there were some that thought, oh, "Listen, he's got that handy gig with the FAI and working as." You know the opposition analyst for Stephen Kenny. Like, you know, why would you leave that? But I guess um, when this comes calling, when your home club comes calling, etc., you don't really have a chance to turn them down. Was that the case with you, or was there any kind of second guessing about what you were going into uh, going back? It was eighteen months now at this stage. No, well, I mean, I had a brilliant job. Um, loved the job that I was in. Um, but I suppose the club were, were struggling. Um, but I, I know I knew the potential of it. Um, I knew that there was good players there, good staff. There's huge potential. It's a football mad town. Uh, I live in the city, which can be 
difficult at times when you're the manager because you can't get away from it. But um, it's a huge club and, and it just needed a bit of freshness. And, and as I said, I knew uh, the potential of it. And, and hopefully we're starting to get somewhere. Um, but it is, it's a big, big football club and, and very demanding uh, job. But it's a, I love getting up in the morning and, and, and going in and being in and around the players and the staff. And I'm in a very privileged position. And for a first senior manager's job, I guess, like it's it's a it's a massive thing for yourself. It's a huge investment in yourself to put yourself forward That's, for that I, kind of thing. Well, it is, and it's it's uh, it's probably um, a courageous decision because it, it, it's difficult managing uh, where you live, and, and there, there'll be a lot of pressure on you. But um, as I said, if I didn't feel that I could try and help move the club on and, 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 and take it to the next level, then I wouldn't have taken it. And, and to be honest, I had a fantastic grounding in the roles that I had been in before. Um, had a brilliant time at Dundalk. Uh, was part of uh, successful teams there. Um, and then got great experience and, and exposure um, with my job in, in, in terms of the FAI and working with brilliant people, Stephen, Keith Andrews, um, a lot of outstanding people so I learned I learned as much as I could everywhere I went and I felt that I was ready uh, and I had done the groundwork to, to take the next step How easy or otherwise was it to kind of serve your apprenticeship under somebody who was at the time with Dundalk just an incredibly successful manager and then parlaying that into the international sphere which didn't start off so well but has now I guess found its footing but what was it like to, to work alongside Stephen and Give us a sense of the kind of coach and the and the and the man he is on the training ground because a lot this week, in the lead up to the Belgium game, obviously has been made of, of Anthony Barry's decision to defect off to Belgium. It's just been a quirk of the the fixture calendar that we're facing them again on Saturday and the impact that he's made. But as the year has gone on, it's almost as if the people have been reluctant, I guess, to give the credit to Stephen for all this. But give us a sense of what kind of a coach he is day to day on the pitch because I don't think we get a real sense of that. No, he's an outstanding. He's an outstanding manager. Um, in terms of my football career as a player and as a coach, I owe him everything. Um, he's outstanding. He uh, very, very brave in how he goes about his business. He encourages players. They really, really express themselves. Gives um, obviously within the structure of the team, he gives players a license to go and. Um, show their quality and, and um, I, I suppose that the real uh, the best way I could describe Stephen as a coach and as a manager is that he's brave and and doesn't get obsessed with stopping the opposition he wants to go and hurt them and, and, he, and encourages his uh, players to do so So when Ireland were going through that particularly rocky period and, and results obviously weren't going their way and that run without goals and run without wins and was building up and building up you had no sense that this was going to it was never going to happen. He's, he's so, uh, Steve, as I said, he's brave. He's an attack-minded manager. He, he wants to um, impose impose ourselves in the game and he was never going to go away from that regardless uh, of results. And, 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 and the proof's been in the pudding, I think, over the last number of games, you can see that the evolution of the team, the young players are are coming to the fore and, and we've found a way of playing uh, and Stephen really believes in it and, and um, I think the players have, have completely bought in and um, I think it's refreshing to see an Ireland team playing in the way that we're playing. On the other side of that, has he given hope, I guess, to the rest of the league and to younger managers like yourself that if you do perform to a certain level with the League of Ireland club, if you get you know league titles under your belt, if you get trophies under your belt, if you can perhaps make a run in Europe, then it shows that these kind of top jobs are available to the likes of you know your Rory Higgins or your Tim Clancy's or whomever else, Keith Long's, should they be successful in their own particular roles. Oh, well, uh, listen, it's it's fantastic, um, and and Stephen, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, deserved the top job. He. Um, Amazing success domestically and in Europe. Uh, put it up to some fantastic clubs in Europe. And then um, took it into his under-21 job where we were going and beating Sweden and Sweden and unlucky not to beat Italy. And he was winning tough games and, and getting good results. And 
really tough fixtures with the 21. So he he was ready for it and, and he's took it in his stride. I've, I don't, I'm not thinking about <laughs> one day could that be me at all. I'm just thinking about trying to be Bohemians next Friday and, and um, the rest will look after itself. But um, no, he has shown um, a sheer drive and, a, and, and, and ambition um, to get to where he's got to and, and, he, and he deserves everything that comes his way. Uh, we'll set aside the wanting to be Bohemians uh, next week because I don't want to fall out while we're on the air, uh, Rory. That'd be a pretty bad <laughs> presenter, shall we? Um, but but circling back to Derry, just I want to talk about the uh, a lot was made of I guess of, of of the finances that are supposedly available to the club, um, but the one thing that it shows, and others have obviously followed suit because they're in different circumstances, but it shows what's possible when you have the security blanket to be able to hand out you know, multi-year contracts, the difference that that can make to a club and the sense of buoyancy that it can give to a club because it's it's not as if you're kind of living hand to mouth and, and waiting for the next deal to come through or whatever, or whatever. It's more a case of you do have a, a an ability to build and that's a huge yes, thing for that, a league running club. Yeah, that, that was one of the... Uh, the main topic of conversation that I had with Philip... Um, in relation to when I was offered the job that I wanted to be in a position where we could build lo- obviously short, medium and long term um, and try and tie our best players to uh, really long contracts so it gives us um, security going forward and, and we're able to build something and you're not scratching around every year trying to pick up a player here and there so the club uh, made it clear that they would support me and that that's the way they wanted to go anyway so no, it's been it's been very very good that's been the biggest uh, change in all of this and and I know people talk about Phillips wealth um, but when we spoke back in the 22nd of April or whatever it was the plan has never changed um, we went after the players that we said we were going to go after and and um, the budget hasn't gone up or anything like that since since he sold his business. So um, he's been extremely supportive, as is everyone on the board and, and in the club. And we want this to be successful over a long, long period of time, not just a not just a quick fix. There seems to be like a three, five, ten year plan almost in place for the club. What's the immediate? Because I guess I guess winning trophies again is is the primary objective for Derry City. Like, and I'm thinking beyond like your playing days there when you won the League Cup for fun uh, pretty much every year it became the Derry City League Cup at that stage um, and we won, a, we won a couple of FAA Cups couple, as well you did indeed yeah um, lost in 2008 though but we won't mention that um, but, uh, <laughs> but let's not talk about my no. penalty well, <laughs> can we there was a great penalty I was behind the goal for that Rory uh, it was fantastic great day great day no but just in terms of, of winning trophies I mean that's something that's going to be hugely important to, to, to Derry City making that next step I guess and, and contending is, for a league uh, title uh, it is, and, and we want to we want to try and bridge the gap. That's what we want to do initially, because let's be honest, we 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 the the squad that Shamrock Rovers have at their disposal, the numbers, the 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 international players, they've got um, outstanding depth, uh, um, and and you look at their squad, and it scares the life out of you. So our our initial goal is to try and bridge that gap, close the gap. Um, how much we can close it remains to be seen, but they're was, was, they're far and away the the biggest and, and best squad of players in the league, and it's up to everyone else to catch them. Um, but the biggest buzz for me, and and I think it is for the the chairman and the board, is that we're seeing a full brandy well at the minute, um, and and the atmosphere, whether it's a Monday or a Friday, don't get me wrong, the atmosphere is better on a Friday. There's no doubt about that. It's the start of people's weekends and sort of party party mode but um we've had full brand oils Monday, Friday, um and that's what we get real satisfaction out of. The fact that the public are buying into it, they're getting right behind it. They can identify with the team. There's a real local feel to the team as well. So um at the minute that's that's what, what satisfies me the most, the fact that um the Brandy Wells rocking and, and, and we're selling it out every game at the minute. Yeah, and you've got a fantastic facility up there, it must be said as well. It's kind of the envy of a, of a lot of teams in the league, I would say, between yourselves and, and Shamrock Rovers. What you're able to do to be able to play in front of, you know, in your, in your case, four packed out stands and Rovers three, like it's, it makes a huge difference, these kind of facilities and the ability to pack them out. It, it brings, it raises everybody's level, I guess. 
Oh, yeah, it's, 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 um, there, as I said before, it's a football mad, it's a football mad town. And I think they can, as I said, they can identify with this team and they're coming out in their numbers and really getting behind it. And, um, for me, we've got injury time winners against Shamrock Rovers and St. Pats. And I don't think we would have if it wasn't for the crowd, um, to be honest. And that's not me trying to, uh, I'd soften them up or get a wee pat in the back or get a bit of praise. I mean it, they're really getting behind the players. The players are getting the energy from it and we're going right to the end and scoring late goals, and, and which is important in any successful team. But no, it's been brilliant. It's, it's a joy to be a part of and um, I hope it continues for a long time. Yeah, Rory, listen, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Wish you the very best of luck uh, with the remainder of the campaign, a lot of which is uh, still stretching out in front of us, of course. And I wish you the very best of luck on April 4th against UCD. Before that, uh, <laughs> sure, we'll talk about it. Uh, Rory, thanks so much for this evening. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Pleasure.